I'll stop preaching now, yeah. And I think I'd just like to stress that it's sodium, not even salt. So that's five of sodium, that would be 10 grams of salt. Yes, this is sodium. We try to stay around three and we pay attention to symptoms. But what's really interesting is people with congestive heart failure and hypertension, within the first month of going on a ketogenic diet, usually show, show marked improvement. And so we can actually move them from, from there to here as they progress to, to, to greater metabolic health. So my GP just said, put salt in your food. And I don't count it, I just put salt in and it's okay. Yeah, salt to taste. Mm. You know, when we get the diet right, which empowers your, the instincts we were all born with, uh, you're, you're probably gonna get, the, get, you know, get it right. So if, if when in doubt, trust your instincts. When they're taking a, the thyretic, thiazide diuretic or a loop diuretic, uh, we don't add sodium. We keep it in the, the two and a half to three grams. We counsel two to half, three grams per day. But those are some of the, particularly the thiazides and, and then the furosemide are the things I want to get them off early. Uh, because what happens is when they, like with, you have too much insulin, when you have too much diuretic, uh, you're going to have people who are out in the sun and they're going to pass out. Yeah. Um, uh, because it impair, that and beta blockers impair their ability to, to respond to a hypovolemic challenge. So again, less meds is better as long as they're metabolically improved in, in terms of health and, and these parameters. This is potassium. This is from the exact same paper, and this is the exact same cohort, 102,000 people followed for 3.7 years. And look at the shape of this curve in terms of mortality risk. And I just, I mean, we're not talking about anybody's numbers, but this is one gram of potassium per day. That's two and that's three. And you, it's going from two down to 0.8. Now, what other nutrient do we know that we can adjust across a, a threefold range? And, and, and again, this is epidemiology. It doesn't prove that if you take people from one to three, you're going to cut their mortality rate by more than half. But it certainly strongly implies that hypothesis, and we have the mechanism. Now, the reason why I put this up here and you know, there was a question about the carnivorous diet. If, you follow, if people follow my protein recommendations, which is 1.5 grams per kilo, and they use fresh meat, you know, real meat, chicken, fish, so real food meat, not hot dogs, <laughs> and not luncheon meat, because when you process food, you take the potassium out of it to a great extent. It still tastes savory because they put more salt in. Salt's not bad, but losing the potassium is a big deal. So using unprocessed meat, and you eat 1.5 per kilo, you're going to get about one gram per day of potassium intake. That's not enough. So if somebody's not eating any vegetables, and if they're not taking bones and you know, undesirable pieces of the animal and putting it in a pot and boiling it, where there's enough flesh in there that you're getting potassium. So you know, when people talk about bone broth, well, I like bone broth, but I like bone and meat broth. You know, when you make broth, you can add um, uh, a certain, certain amount of potassium, and it may be as much as a gram per day if you're having two cups of homemade broth. So the way you get more potassium is you add vegetables or you add vegetables and broth. But the other way to get from here to here would be to double your protein intake. So maybe the reason why people instinctively want to eat more protein when they're on a carnivore, you know, a, 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 a pure carnivorous diet is that that's where you get to at least this relatively safe spot. You can buy a, a, um, a, a commercial on, you know, in the, on the grocery shelf that's 50% sodium chloride, 50% potassium chloride. It's half potassium. So if you take a level teaspoon of that, you'll get, I think, a bit over one gram of potassium.